Hello, I am thrilled to finally be able to release the first episode of Cherapy. After many months of work and preparation with our amazing sponsor, U Financial, I'm honored to introduce everyone to the Cherapy series. U Financial Group is proud to sponsor the Cherapy series and is excited to be a supporter in helping bring these incredible stories to life. A loyal client, Chris Kokoras, president and CEO of U Financial, was getting his hair cut when he started talking about the concept of the series. Chris immediately wanted to be a supporter because Cherapy aligns with his company's missions and values of being of service to our community. And that's what this project is all about, highlighting the acts of service that these folks in the chair have done for so many people. If you ever need someone to talk to you about your finances, reach out to Youth Financial and I bet they can help you figure out your finances and your future. Thank you. So what are you up to recently? Work. Just work? That's it? <laughs> work and work and kids. That's all you do is work. I know. Did you uh, Did you hear that big uh, crash the other night? Oh my god, Tate. That scared the crap out of me. You know, I haven't been to Iraq in going on nine years, but there are certain sounds that will take me back there very fast, and that was one of them. That, that thud. Yeah, it was familiar, right? Yeah. So do you have a little bit of PTSD from your report? Oh God. Right, yeah. Absolutely. And I don't think I knew I had it as bad as I had it. Because you <coughs> you justify things, right? Oh, <laughs> that's just because I'm having a bad day or I feel this way because you startled me. And you don't realize that, no, those are signs. and. You have to fix that, so, oh, so yeah. How, how have you worked through? Yeah, like, obviously you have to recognize the triggers, right? Right. Well, yeah, you have to, you have to figure out what, what part of this affects my life that didn't affect my life before, you know, what changed. Mm -hmm. And then you have to fix it, you have to heal it. And that, that's probably the hardest part because it'll show its face in new situations that you've never dealt with and you're like how can I have how can this be related to PTSD when it's a relationship issue it's a a work issue it's like well because you carry that baggage with you <laughs> so it's being honest with yourself I think so I had to do a lot of honest talks to myself so speaking of being in the military I've never really asked you details but we've had conversations before about mm -hmm. like you say everyone's got a hat or everyone's got a why. Everyone's Everybody got why. Everybody's right. got why. That's one of our yeah. favorite things. Right. The why. Right. What is your why? Why did you join the military? Why did you join the army? That's a good question. Well, I was 17 years old. My grandparents always raised me to believe that education is the most important tool you can have. Um, Agreed. Right. So. I wasn't smart enough to get a scholarship. I had no idea how to pay for college. And a recruiter came and asked me a few questions and told me about the Army. I mean, I didn't talk to any other branch. Oh, was, but why specifically? You didn't, there was no specific reason why. No, no, it wasn't. It, it was nothing sexy. It was not. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, it wasn't. I mean, to be honest, this is actually a pretty cool story. So. In order to join the army, you have to take a test called the ASVAB. Yeah. Okay. So one day in school, they came over the intercom and they said, "Hey, whoever wants to take the ASVAB, there's free donuts." There it is. Free donuts. Free donuts. 
<laughs> Free donuts on Crisp, your two in the Crisp, army. Krispy Kreme donuts. And um, I was hungry that day, so I raised my hand just to take the test. And I... Uh, and there's your wife. <laughs> I joined Sponsored the army. Sponsored by Krispy Kreme. <laughs> right? Yeah, no. <laughs> so I took the test, and then once they got the test results back, the recruiter came and talked to me. And then that's when it... You know, everything happens, though, for a reason, it does. right? It does. So everything has to spark something, and, and it might be in ways that you don't you don't know yet. But yeah, when she talked to me, she solved my problem, right? Because my problem was, how do I pay for college? Boom. The army. But you said everything happens for a reason. No, right. you went to the army and you met your wife. I did. So, yeah. how long have you guys been together? Um, we've been together nine years now. Nine years. Now, yeah. you said, yeah, like 2003, right? You said that was when your first deployment was. Right. Did, did you guys know each other then? Oh, God, no. Yeah. No, I was I was a private. So what was it like being in the in the army in two thousand three when it was kind of like that don't ask don't tell, like if you're gay we don't want to know about it. Right. Yeah. It was it was kind of like a fuzzy area, right? Like so, yeah. Yeah, you... you can be gay, but like don't talk about it and don't you know don't flaunt your gayness. Don't but flaunt hey, you, your gayness. But hey, you can you can you can be in the army. Um, honestly. I didn't have a lot of issues, but I don't have a lot of issues with the gay thing. Yeah. I'm more of a teacher in the community. I don't I don't draw a lot of attention that is negative, I guess. I don't know. You're so, Christina the soldier, not Christina the gay soldier. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> right. right, yeah, absolutely. Christina I mean everybody knew soldier. I was everybody knew I was gay, but it wasn't it wasn't something that we talked about. We didn't need to talk about it. You know, because you're a soldier first, so that wasn't really important. But by today's standards of the military would you mm -hmm. say it's more accepted to be gay and in the military? A little easier, maybe? Yeah, I think that it comes with new challenges. Because now that you can be open and serve, you're also scrutinized a little bit more, right? Okay. So whereas before you just shut up and you didn't talk about it and nobody put the spotlight on you per se. Now the spotlight's there. And so you've got you've to gotta navigate that lane. Um, and know that that's that you are the start, right? So there's not going to be a lot that happened before you. Um, you're 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 paving the way for upcoming soldiers, for a new generation. There's a lot. I think it's a learning curve, to be honest with you. You, you told me once. You were telling me a story one time about 2003. Mm -hmm. um, in your uh, in your deuce and a half here. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. In the deuce and a half, rolling across the desert. Yes. That was the start. That was the start of the war. That was yeah. So again, to come full circle. So the recruiter talks to me. I end up joining. Seventeen left when I was eighteen. I joined a two-year contract. Right. I wasn't. This is before nine eleven. Nine eleven happened while I was in basic training. I thought it was a joke. Um, I thought that the drill sergeants were playing a prank on us because, not a prank per se, but, you know, getting us ready yeah, for, right, because we can't watch the news, we can't watch TV, we can't make phone calls, so it's whatever they're telling us. Mm -hmm. And when they told us about the towers, we were like, okay, is this part of their set things that they're, you know, that they're trying to teach us, like what happens if we do end up going to war? And then we found out it was real. Mm -hmm. And then I remember, I remember so vividly, every single one of the girls that were in my platoon all got together and we prayed and we cried because we had no idea what the hell was about to happen. So were you excited because no. you were going to get to go to war? No. You were scared. Absolutely. I'm 18 years old and I joined to go to college. And now, and now the poss well, I don't know if I'm going to war, but the possibility of going to war. So then I report to Fort Drum up in New York and we're going. And you shipped out. Yeah, so we got ready for the deployment. We packed up, and we had no idea because nobody nobody went before us, right? You know, it wasn't like it's uncharted territory. Absolutely. So we get to Kuwait. We pick up vehicles. We have our M16s, our bayonets, our headgear, our flak vest, and and we're just moving. Where are we moving to? We don't know. We're just driving. Like literally, think about driving in sand and seeing nothing behind you. That's terrifying. That gives me anxiety. Does it? It does. Yeah. And we would set up shop, right? So we would we would park. How many guys were in your deuce and a half? Okay, so it was I was the driver, and then I had um, 
it's called a TC. It's it's your passenger. So it was just two of us, but I also slept in it. So I slept in it with slept in it, peed in it. In it. <laughs> I did not pee in it. <laughs> I peed in um water buckets, <laughs> um, but <laughs> water cans. But um it, when we slept in it, it was me, uh, my sergeant, and then another another NCO. So okay. there was three of us plus equipment. And that's where we slept for probably three months of my tour wow. until we until we got established out on a base. And even then, I, we slept on a cot, and there was nobody there. So, you know, besides us. Yeah. Right? You are a mom. You have right. a full-time career. Right. You're in the military, full-time in the military. Part-time. Right? Part-time in the military. Two little ones and mm-hmm. a wife. How do, you, how do you juggle that? How do you do that? I can't even juggle. I would say what probably every other mom says, and you just do it. There's, just, no, there's no choice. You just do it. I guess every soldier would say that too. There's no choice, right? What choice do I have? What is the worst thing that happened to you in Iraq when you were deployed? This last tour? Yeah. There's probably two. Okay. The first one happened January 2nd. Okay, so the base I was on, there was a... I didn't see it, but there was a, a long house, right? And we thought it was a farming house. Um, and come to find out, it was a facility that was housing a hundred bombs, and they all went off at once. So the alarm goes off, you run straight to the bunker, mm-hmm. okay? Um, I wasn't by a bunker. This is kind of funny. I was by a porta potty. <laughs> <laughs> Did you jump in the porta potty? Yes, because that's what you're trained to do. You take cover, wherever cover is. I, I continue to be made fun of about this. But so I took cover and, and it just started raining and it's not stopping. It's It got so bad, I was able to move to a bunker. Is this the point where you, uh, you face your own mortality and realize this could be it? This is where they're gonna find me. This is where they're gonna find me. In the- <laughs> well, I thought the whole base was gonna blow up because I mean these things just did not stop. There was air burst that happened in the air. So what an air burst is is it's a bomb that goes mm-hmm. in the air and then it explodes and then shrapnel falls down, killing things, mm-hmm. right? And then there's just rockets, rockets that just hit and it just rained and rained and rained, um, and then it stopped. And then once it stops, you have to assess the damage. Okay. So, once we got the all clear, um, and we assessed the damage, this is the part that gives me goosebumps. Not one person got hurt. Wow. I mean, there was probably enough to kill hundreds. The interesting part is, the people, the, the spot on the base that got hit the worst were these line of chews. Okay, that's, that's the housing units that we stay in. Mm-hmm. Every single person was at work across the street. That whole entire area got blown to shreds. If they would have been home an hour later, they would have all died. Flames swallowed up the drone team's living quarters. Some 30 troops would have been sleeping here had they not been ready. Others rushed around the base as missiles came down, looking for anyone who may have been injured, checking on the base's defenses. On any other night, some of the two and a half thousand troops and contractors would have been in the area's hit. Wow. Hey, I have goosebumps now telling you. Um, and then there's the horrible thing that happened, right? So that was April 22nd to the 23rd. We got hit, alarm went off. Alarm went off three, four times a week. Um, and we had to go to the bunker. I slept in the bunker, by the way. Everybody would joke. You want to find Christina? Find her in the bunker. From 8 o'clock when she got off work till 2 in the morning, Christina's in the bunker. Because I knew we were going to get hit. So why be in my room? Mm-hmm. Um, anyways. Alarm went off. We were getting hit. They were hitting hard. All clear. They assessed the damage. Two of our soldiers died. Wow. It, yeah, it was horrible. Absol- absolutely horrible. One was on FaceTime with his family. Everything goes black. And... That was it. That was the last time he spoke with his family. Yep. Wow. I can't, I can't even imagine. That just hits me. Right. Hits Can you imagine? Really imagine being in the last conversation. No. And he had like five kids. 
And then the other gentleman passed away. I think he was sleeping. Um, so in the army, we all have jobs, right? And sometimes we get detailed to do things that suck, but they're very, very, very important. So I was detailed to take all of his things and pack them up for his family. Um, so I had to go in his room. I mean, the whole room is exploded, right? I mean, there's nothing, blood everywhere. And I had to take every piece of him, not him, but every piece of his belongings out and inventory it. If it had blood on it or it had shrapnel in it, I had to throw it away. So one, one thing that was really interesting, there would be pieces of, of stuff like the glasses that we wear come with a, a thing to wipe them off with, mm -hmm. right? And there would be just shards just layered into it where the shrapnel just tore things up, right? And I would have to take that out. That, that can't be used. His pillow, it was bloody. I can't use that. Um, so there was a lot of piles of, does this go back to the family? Because they will go clean it up. Mm -hmm. Or is this just ruined? And anything that's ruined, his boots, blood. Um, I can't, I can't. I can't bring that back to his family because they can't clean it. Mm -hmm. So I have to incinerate it. But that's a process too. Everything is done with such respect. It took me, I want to say three or four days. And I had help to go through every single part of his room and get anything to give his family any kind of closure. Um, but again, you learn things about people, right? Mm -hmm. You learn. You see a side of them that they don't show you. Right, that they only keep private. Mm -hmm. And now I'm in your private space and I'm learning something about you that was none of my business to learn. For example, he liked chapstick. It was his thing. Mm -hmm. I didn't, when he was my soldier, I had no idea he liked chapstick. But going through his room. He did inventory chapstick. I had to inventory a lot of chapstick. And then the smell, right? He had a smell. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't get rid of that for a really long time. Because you have guilt. Mm -hmm. So... Have you been able to, I don't want to say let it go, because I don't think you ever really let things go. Heal. Heal. Yeah. Process. Heal. Pro yes. Move forward. Right. I think that's the hard thing to do is because in one part of your head, you're like, that doesn't deserve to be healed because it doesn't, because you want to give him, his family that respect mm -hmm. that says you were worth the tears. You were worth the the effort you're worth being remembered mm -hmm. but then you come to a point where you forgive yourself for surviving you understand that this is part of war mm -hmm. and that you have to push forward and how you push forward I think really determines a lot about how the rest of your life's going to play because you don't you don't go to war and come back the same person. You and I have talked about that mm -hmm. a lot. You don't. You can't. Yeah. Things are different now. 